Johnny Dollar. Dollar, this is Adolf Dorfman at Amalgamated Life Association. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Dorfman. Where the devil have you been? I've been trying to get you for days. Well, I've been out of town, sir, in Las Vegas on a special assignment. Oh, never mind, never mind. Just get yourself over to this office, Dollar, and run away. Well, now, Mr. Dorfman... Just what do you think you're up to, anyway? This is absurd. This is ridiculous. If you say it is, I'm sure it must be. Of course it is. Do you mind telling me what you mean by it? The Cleet Martin case. What did you think I was talking about? I wasn't quite sure. But don't tell me you have solved it and just haven't bothered reporting to me. No, Mr. Dorfman, I have not solved it as yet, but I think I'm on the right track. You think? You think, don't you know? No, because there is one possible clue to be checked out before I can be certain. Yes? Certain of what? That it actually is a clue to that murder. What? Do you mean to say you've been wasting valuable time and a lot of company money on just... just... Just theories about that killing? That you haven't really accomplished a thing? <sighs> Mr. Dorfman... Oh, that's ridiculous. And what about this expense account you've sent in and the fact it's marked incomplete, no total given? Does that mean I'm to expect another one? Yes, it does, Mr. Dorfman. Maybe more than one by the time I'm through. Oh, that's ridiculous. Whatever gave you the idea we'd pay you before the case is closed? Why do you expect us to pay you now? I don't. Then why send in these itemized expenses? Because you yourself demanded I send in my expense account on Friday of each week, whether complete or not. Yeah, oh, uh, uh, now look here. Some of these, these, these items you've listed, these charges you've run up... When it's all over, all wrapped up, I'll be glad to explain every one of them to you. Not a bit of a Dollar. You get yourself on over here and start explaining them now. Why, I, I, I've been trying to reach you for days. As I tried to tell you, Mr. Dorfman, if I... If you have anything to tell me, you can say it to my face, not waste my time on this telephone. Well, you're coming over here? I certainly am. The CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer and the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Amalgamated Life Associates Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the wayward gun matter. Adolf Dorfman always had been, always would be a short-tempered, crotchety old maid. Nothing but trouble on a case. But Amalgamated Life Mostly through Al Spangler, a VP and a very nice guy, has done mighty well for me over the years. So when Dorfman called me in on the Martin case, I couldn't very well turn him down in spite of resenting his high-handed manner. Expense account item one, $1.10 for a cab to his office. Oh, all right, all right, I'll accept that one. But look at this item right here. four eighty for a tank full of gasoline. Because I used my own car to go over there to Lakewood. Yeah, but four eighty. When you could have made the trip on a bus for less than two dollars? Sure, sure I could. Then why didn't you? Then we'd have had to spend eight or ten dollars in taxi fares between the Martin home and police headquarters. Is that what you would have preferred? Yeah, well, no, 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 of course not. But just the same, Look, Dollar, we're you just can't... wasting time here, if you'll excuse me. Yeah, we're wasting time, you, huh? In the beginning, you'd question every single item in this expense account. You always do. And why not? And that's why, instead of handing one in that would give you some real cause for worry, I decided for once to keep expenses down to the barest minimum. But it hasn't done the least bit of good. So if you don't mind... Uh, minimum? Man. What about this? One seventy-five for lunch. What about it? Do you deny that it included an overgenerous tip to some pretty waitress? The tip was exactly twenty-five cents, and it came out of ah, my... there. You see, a twenty-five cent tip on a dollar and a half meal—that's ridiculous. I started to say the tip came out of my own pocket, Mister Dorfman. If you don't believe me, take a look at the cash register slip. It's right there. Go ahead, look at it. All right, all right, all right. I'll take your word for it. The fact remains that you still haven't solved the case. I think I have. You think you have. But I'd rather not talk about it just yet. Well, I don't know why not. You either know who killed Mr. Cletus Martin or you don't. Now, which is it? I'll be able to give you the whole story, I hope, after I get a phone call from New York and not before. New York? Yes. From a friend of mine at 18th Precinct Police Headquarters. Oh, so that explains this item here. Return ticket to New York and several cab fares. That's right. But why? What possible connection can they have with the Martin matter? They just happen to have a top ballistics technician. Ballistics? What's the matter with the police in Lakewood? Not a thing. Or with their county police over there? Not a thing. Then why go all the way to New York? Because once I got hold of the picture of the bullet that killed Mr. Martin, I didn't want Lakewood or Lakewood County to know what I intended doing with it. Why? I'd rather not say. 
Now, you've had these items explained, so if you'll excuse now, me... Now, 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 wait, wait, Dollar, sit down, sit down. There is please. nothing further I can do until I get my call from New York. Oh, but there is. Uh, there's a... Uh, something else I want to talk to you about. The really important reason I sent for you. Well, I hope it's a lot more important than quibbling about this expense account. Oh, it is, it Then is. why the big stall? Why all the waste of time? A stall? Yes. I don't know why, Mr. Dorfman, but that's all you've been doing for the last ten minutes is stalling me. Oh, no, no, no. Not a bit of it, not a bit. I was merely... I, I was only... Uh, 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 now, sit down, please. Sit down. All right. Well, what is it? You, uh... Say you were out of town? I was in Las Vegas, but it had nothing whatsoever oh, yes, to do with... Oh, yes, 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 yes. No, that's it. That's the reason we couldn't find you anyway. We? I mean, I. I couldn't find you. Yes, that's... Uh, very pleasant out there at this time of year, isn't it? Look, will you please quit stalling again and tell me what this other important matter is? Well, all right. All right, all right, all right. Uh, have you seen the papers? Did you know another client of ours just met a violent end? Mr. Barryman, here in Hartford? Yes, Alfred W. Barryman. You didn't know him? No, nor that he was a client of yours. Nor that he was a big contractor like Mr. Martin? No. Nope. Now, uh, do you plan to assign me to that case, too? Do we have to? Of course you don't. And if you want the truth, Mr. Dorfman, if you're the company contact on it, so why wait until now to tell me? Why waste all that time picking away at the expense account? Don't you know? I certainly don't. Now, what goes, I would give... Ah, uh, now you may know. Come in, Sergeant. All right, Mr. Dorfman. How about this? Johnny Dollar, huh? That's right, Sergeant, uh... Sergeant Bill Hanset. I told you I'd find him for you, Sergeant. I don't know how you did it. What is this? All we know was he'd left town, Mr. Dollar. Wait a minute. Why the gun, Sergeant? You ought to know. Up in your feet, Dollar. You mind telling me what this is all about? Just hand me your gun, Dollar. That nice big thirty-eight you carry. Well, what's the matter? I'm sure I don't know. It's for my thirty-eight. I don't happen to have it on me at the moment. I know. What? Because we got it, Dollar. Serial number and all down at headquarters. And maybe that's the reason I'm holding you on suspicion of murder. Pardon me, mister. She said... Do you have a man? The old gag. Sure, I said. Do you have a cigarette? She had one. Newport. Newport filters cigarettes. We lit up. Some smoke. Finest, rich tobacco flavor I'd ever tasted. Real tobacco. The way I like it. The right touch of menthol and just a hint of mint. A great combination. She suggested. Makes Newport more refreshing to begin with. More refreshing all the way. She wasn't kidding. Been smoking them ever since. Newport's. Newport Filters Cigarettes. Sergeant's bombshell wasn't repeatable. Me, Johnny Dollar, arrested on suspicion of murder by a cop with a grudge, fingered by a tight-fisted people hater named Amalgamated Life Dorfman. Thanks, Mr. Dorfman, for latching on for us. Yeah, pleasure, Sergeant. Now, wait a minute, Sergeant. If you're talking about the Martin matter... Now, don't try and kid me, Dollar. We got you nailed down for the murder of that other contractor, Barryman. What? <laughs> and he pretended not to know much about it. It was almost evasive when I brought it up. That explains all your stalling. Waiting for this man to get here. I think I did very well. Oh, you were great. Next week, he's still in. Now, look, son. No time for talk, Tyler. On to headquarters now, and account of you happen to be under arrest. I am. Quite so. In which case, I'm entitled to one phone call, am I not? Sure, if you want to call a mouthpiece, you're entitled. You mind if I use your phone, Mr. Dorfman? No, not at all, not at all. Thank you so much. Provided, of course, you pay for the call. Don't bank on it. I beg your pardon? Don't be surprised if you end up paying for it. Through the nose. I call this to Lieutenant Randy Singer, 18th Precinct, New York Police Department. 
No, he still had no word for me, but he promised to call the minute he did, so I told him where to try if I wasn't at my apartment. Okay, now, Johnny, you ready? Look, are you sure this isn't some kind of a gag? Are you kidding? Because if it is, it's a pretty bad one. Sergeant, don't you know who I am? I mean, what my job yeah, is? Yeah, 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 Donald. I know all about you. What a great guy you are. Thanks. And nobody wasn't any more surprised than me. But Lieutenant Bartley don't go off half-cocked, and you know it. Bartley? So when he says to bring you in, well, baby, in you go. He sent you after me, Harry Bartley? Lieutenant Bartley. Now, come on. <laughs> Okay, now, Lieutenant, you want me to book him now, lock him up? In a couple of minutes, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Well, Johnny, I'll say this for you, Harry. Yeah? When you pull a boner, you really do. Wasn't that one of the gentlemen of the press outside there? Yep, no doubt he's on the phone to his paper right now. Harry, this is ridiculous. Is it? You know me better than to think I could have killed this, this barrowman, is it? When your own gun was found beside the body, when a bullet from it killed him... Just oh, no, make let me, me handle this, Sergeant. Uh, yes, sir. Right. Look at the facts, Johnny. You've been on the Martin case up in Lakewood, haven't you? That's right. But you've been stalling on it. But there is reason for that. You even left town, went to Vegas, presumably on another investigation. It was on another investigation. Would you like some verification? No, no, I'll take your word for it. Thanks a lot. But you found no real clue to the Martin murder, did you? Have you forgotten the microphoto of the bullet that you got for me? No, but you didn't tell me why, Johnny. Why'd you want that? Because maybe it was his gun did that kill him, Sergeant. So he figured on changing the barrel. So the markings wouldn't look like that for him. Okay, Sergeant. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Let me go on, Johnny. Please do. Then Barrowman got killed here in Hartford. And he's also a contractor bidding on that redevelopment project there in Lakewood County. Is there a tie-up, Johnny? Are you kidding, Lieutenant? Sergeant. Don't you say? There's some other contractor wants that business and hires Donald to knock him off. Well, Johnny, Harry, if you'll get rid of Big Mouth here for a couple of minutes. Hey, now, just a minute, baby. Okay, okay, Sergeant. I'll call you when I want you. But did you hear when he just called me? Yes, I heard. Just close the door quietly. Go on. Yes, sir. All right, now, Harry. I've held out on things, but for good reason. Don't you know about the rotten political situation up there in Lakewood? Well, I've heard some things. Well, then you know the contracting job on that redevelopment project is going to be one big juicy plum for somebody. I know. And who gets it depends, unfortunately, on one man. On one politician whose own brother just happens to be in the contracting business. Do you know the man I mean? This Mr. Politics I'm talking about? Yes, I'm afraid I do. And he's powerful enough to make things pretty rough for you or me or anybody else who might cross him. Are you saying that he might have killed Martin? Exactly. Killed off one of his brother's competition. And the same for Barrowman's death? Yes. And for the same reason. Because there is no doubt that Mr. Barrowman or Mr. Martin could have underbid Mr. Dirty Politics' brother if they stayed alive. So with that in mind, I call him Mr... On this politician. On what excuse, Johnny? Just to suggest some possible changes in his insurance. He fell for it and he let me in. And Harry, there in his study on the wall, he had quite a collection of guns. Most of them flintlocks. Very old and very well cared for. Flintlocks? But I also spotted one half hidden behind some books on a shelf that was a dead ringer for the gun I always carry. Same make, same model, same caliber and finish. Oh, so by the simple device of dropping a lighted cigarette into his wastebasket, starting a little fire, well, while he was throwing it outside, I switched guns on him. Why, Johnny? So that I could have his checked against the microphoto you gave me of the bullet that killed Mr. Martin. Checked there in Lakewood? Oh, no. Why not? Because if my hunch was wrong, Harry, and if it got around, that man could make more trouble, could hurt more people than you or I ever dreamed of. And his first target would be the Lakewood police who made the checkup. You can be thankful that you don't have that kind of politics to contend with. I am. But if you're right, if his gun matches that bullet... Then he's through, Harry. The big construction job will be handed out legitimately. And more important, Lakewood and Lakewood County will be clean for the first time in years. And you will have your killer. Yes, if this story of your switching guns is true. If it's true? Yeah. Harry, you've got to be kidding. Don't you see now why I've had to go this thing alone? If it was his gun that killed Martin. If not, the story about your gun, why it was used for the Barrowman killing, is going to sound pretty fishy. What do you mean? Johnny, we know only one thing. It was your gun that killed Alfred Barrowman. 
And I've told you why. Yeah, but what if the tests show your gun also killed Martin? Harry, that's impossible. When Martin died, I had my gun in my own possession. That's exactly what I mean. Now, wait a minute. Sergeant, answer. Harry, will you wait a minute? Yeah, Lieutenant. You can lock him up now. What? Yes, sir. It'll be a pleasure. Only first I better book him, hadn't I? Oh, uh, just leave that to me. Harry, you're out of your ever-loving mind. Am I? Come along, Dollar. Hey, shut up. You like a car with plenty of pep. A car with reserve power for safe passing. Most good drivers do, but they don't like to pay extra for premium gasoline. Listen, in three out of five cars, regular priced Sinclair Dino Gasoline matches performance of premium gasolines, saves you up to four cents a gallon. Almost anywhere you see the Sinclair Dinosaur sign, you can save up to four cents a gallon with Dino. Drive with care and buy Sinclair Dino Gasoline. Okay, Lieutenant. Thanks, Hanley. I'll call you. Yes, sir. Well, it seems to me the least you can do is ask me to sit down, Johnny. Sure, jail, Harry. Make yourself at home. Thanks. <laughs> Cigarette? No, thanks. I have one. Now, what goes, Harry? Well, don't you believe what I told you last night? You seen the morning paper? Yes, and I'm sure you went out of your way to have it brought into me. That's right. And the cigarettes and extra coffee and the reporters who call on you. Did you tell him anything? You know darn well I didn't. Yeah, I thought you'd clam up, huh? Harry, don't you see what you've done to me to my reputation in this town? You think so? I'll never live down this boo-boo of yours. And worst of all, you're letting a killer run around loose. I am? Well, wasn't it your idea to try to pin the Martin murder on him, too, as a clincher? Well, of course it was, but... Look, Harry, will you listen to me? Sure, if you think it'll do you any good. Now, I'm expecting a call. A very important one. Yeah, from where? From whom? Well, you wouldn't like it if I told you because I didn't contact you instead. But I had to stay away from this territory to prevent even the remotest possibility of a leak. But if you'll let me out long enough to take that call when it comes in, and I told him to try to reach me here... Don't you mean if it comes in? No, I mean when. It'll be a ballistics report on the gun. His gun. As compared to the photo of that bullet that killed Martin. But what if they don't tell you what you've hoped for? Harry, don't you see there is still a matter of my gun? I know. Well, don't you believe what I told you about it, about the switch? Lieutenant, I've got an urgent one for you, real urgent, up in your office. Okay, Hanley, thanks. Harry, listen to me. You've got to let me out of here to get that call. We'll see. Behave yourself, Johnny. Well, what is it this time, Hanley? I don't get it, Dollar, but out you go. Well, thank you. Come on, I'll lead the way. You uh, mind telling me where we're going? Sure. Up to Lieutenant Bartley's office. Phone call for me? Uh, gee, how should I know? Come on, let's find out. This could be very important. Now, take it easy. Huh? My feet hurt. Hey, listen. Yeah? Tell me one thing. How come a smart man like you didn't get a lawyer to spring you? Only one reason. I know your Lieutenant Bartley a little better than he thinks. Huh? At least I hope I do, because if I don't, if he's pulled the boo-boo, it looks as though he's pulled. Well, come on in, Johnny. I have a little surprise for you. Oh, uh, that's all, Hanley, and thanks. Yes, sir. Now, this had better be good, Harry. Believe me, Johnny, it is. Oh, uh, sit down. Thanks, but that's all I've been doing for the last 15 now, hours. listen. Now, that urgent call I got when I had to leave you a couple of hours ago? Yeah. Well, it was a phone call for you. Randy Singer in New York? Have you forgotten? He's an old friend of mine, too. But look. Look here. See, this is a transcript of his call. Let me see. Kind of proves you were right, Johnny. It was that gun of Mr. Dirty Politics that killed Cletus Martin. I knew it, Harry. It had to be. And, of course, that gives full credence to what you told me about switching with him. And that means that he also killed Alfred Berriman. No doubt about it. So, once again, Johnny, one of your crazy hunches paid off. That hunch was based on plenty of known facts. Anyway, you're a hero again. Oh, some hero after spending a night in the clink, after being booked in a murder charge? My name is Mud. Uh, booked? Well, certainly, by you. Well, you know, you know, I must have forgotten to. What? Yeah, so if you want to sue me for holding you illegally... Oh, if I had any sense, I probably would. <laughs> but now, would you make with a good reason for all this, Harry? Well, it's a trick I learned a long time ago from a fellow. A man I've admired for a long time, Johnny. You. 
Me? Yeah, I suspected Mr. Dirty Politician, too. As would anybody who really knew about his methods and his machinations. All his shady deals up there in Lakewood. So? So, stealing a page from your book, I decided that the best way to throw him off, make him careless, keep him around here feeling smug, was to broadcast that we had absolute proof of your guilt. Uh-huh. And don't you see, with not only the papers, but even the boys here on the force believing it, well, he couldn't possibly smell a rat. Mm. As a result, instead of running away, well, we picked him up right here in Hartford. Well, that's all very fine for you, Harry. And when I faced him with a report on his gun that killed Martin, and then told him about the switch with your gun that he then used on Barrowman, well, believe it or not, Johnny, and so help me, you could have knocked me over with a feather. I was that surprised. Yeah. Johnny, this smart, clever old crook, got so rattled, so completely confused, he broke down and made a full confession. Congratulations, Harry. <laughs> you have made a real hero of yourself. Uh, of myself? Mm. But I just wonder how long it's going to take me to live down that phony newspaper story. But you have, Johnny, you have. I have, huh? Sure. And just wait till you see that afternoon edition. Giving you full credit for the whole stunt. Oh? That's right, Johnny. The only hero on this case is you. Well, now, wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, after all, Harry, you're the one who wrapped it all up. Oh, yeah? But where would I be if you hadn't laid all the groundwork? If I hadn't got the idea for this little trick from some of those cases of yours. Absolutely nowhere. No, Johnny. It's yours. All yours. After this, I think I'd better keep my tricks to myself. Well, now, wait a minute. How can I? When every case I handle gets broadcast all over the country. Well, I guess I just can't win. Expense account total? Well... All I want now is one big, fat apology from meddling old Adolf Dorfman at Amalgamated Life for having trapped me into that night in jail. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, San Francisco and a ship. A most unusual ship. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson, music supervision by Ethel Huber, sound patterns by Joseph Cabibbo. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Robert Dryden as Adolf Dorfman, Ralph Bell as Sergeant Anseth, Martin Blaine as Lieutenant Bartley, and Nat Poland as Hanley the Guard. Pleasures and palaces, though we may roam, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. My name is Trudy Peebles. I'm your welcome wagon hostess in Albany. How well we realize there's no place like home. If you're moving to a new city, home can be a little strange. New faces, new places. It's our job in Welcome Wagon to make newcomers feel at home. Won't you call us when there's a newcomer on your street? Welcome Wagon hostesses are charming ambassadors of goodwill. Won't you call Welcome Wagon at State 59640 and give them the name and address of any newcomer you know. Each newcomer will receive greetings and warm wishes. From civic-minded businessmen. Your call will help your neighbor, and it will help your Welcome Wagon hostess who carries on this valuable community service. Call State 59640. That's State 59640 for Welcome Wagon. WRW Music, Row 59, Albany.